Glad to know you are still with us. Well, very quickly, we'll be talking about the deportation of 196 Nigerians from India. Well, it's interesting to know that Nitkom Bosa Bike Dabi Erewa has responded to that particular uh, incident with Nigerians wondering how or why we have that number being stranded and also being deported back into Nigeria. Well, I'm not alone as always. Uh, I have right here with me my co-presenter. Samuel <laughs> And we are joined by the amazing Amazing and beautiful Messi Emmanuel. Thank you. I like to call her the producer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So looking at this particular story, I mean, a lot of times we hear stories of Nigerians being stranded in various countries and now India. I mean, uh, when I saw that story, I, I, I asked myself, India again? <laughs> so you'll be surprised because mostly we hear of US, UK, people travel to Europe. But even me, when I saw the India, I was surprised. But of course, people travel to even some African countries. They're just looking for greener pasture. And they don't mind the way they go about it. Some actually mind. Why some don't mind? They're just desperate. I want to leave this country. I'm looking for a better place to go to. And you can't blame them. Talk of the economy, inflation, everything, unemployment. So why won't people leave? But again, why not follow the right route? We have, we have, we've seen cases of irregular migration. People traveling through the desert. You would think it's just... Um, it's just, um, it's, it's, you would think it ends at um, Libya, the Mediterranean Sea, but you hear stories of people traveling through the desert, working for days, for months, just because they want to cross to Europe. You know, it's, it's sad when you talk about, you know, their experiences having to walk and what happens in the desert, how that some of them drop dead in the desert because there is no water, and how that some of them even, you know, on the sea, some of them drown you know yes. a, a lot of things happen it, it, it's it's it, you know it's it's burning someone let's say it's worrisome to know that uh, people irrespective of these experiences still are back on these journeys yeah it speaks a lot and um i was about reacting to what she said when okay. she talked about people applying the right routes it's not as if people are not aware as to going by you know you know um the sea maybe boarding ships or going by air and all that they understand all of this but the question is do they really have the funds so why to really do all of this i'm not saying no i'm not no i'm not saying it is the right thing to do but you should understand the reason behind the actions but when you talk about you funds are you aware that sometimes they end up even spending more more when they go that through this I illegal route no i don't think they spend they more. more because they are being attacked on the road <laughs> they are only exposed to dangers but i don't think they spend more because some spend because more. They to me, do. To me, actually, by the time they get to that country, they're already owing a lot of money. Yeah. Yes. Well, so your agents <laughs> will come and make everything very, very different yes. to you. I'm going to help you with your papers. We'll travel through this route. We'll go from one country to be like a two-way two um, travel. It will be like three-trip journey. They'll make it very seamless for you. Okay, make a deposit of one million to cover it. By the end of the day, you're going to be in debt. And you don't know where you're going to meet at the end of the way. Maybe at the end of the Most of them get stuck in Libya. They get themselves involved in activities they're not supposed to do on a normal day. All right, I think we'll, we'll take a break now, and um, when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, I thought you were going to have that. <laughs> well, we we're just about, um, you know, getting her taught. You okay, know, so the uh, I'll say most times they, they end up being stuck in Libya and they get themselves involved in activities they won't do on a normal day. But, but, you, if you, you hear their story. They, some of them don't even have access to water. They end up drinking their urine. It's as bad and as terrible as that. Most of them return to Nigeria with different dis sickness, different disease, because maybe they're involved in sexual activities just because they want to survive, they want to complete their journey, and they want to come back home during Christmas and flaunt. <laughs> it's happening already. People are everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah, but at the same time, we still need to um, look at the fact that these people are not even happy going through all of this, and it boils down to the fact that our leaders really need to up their game, because if things really are working well, People won't subject themselves into all of this. Nobody's happy going through that kind of route just to get to your destination. Of course, they're doing that just to help their lives and help those who are, you know, solely dependent on them. But at the same time, if things are working well, if there are jobs in the country and there are security to these jobs, you don't lose your job just for any reason. And the businesses are working well. You have 
power that can really boost a lot of businesses. You have and access to funds. I mean, to so no but good. Mr. When you talk about funds, my question will be the amount they spend on relocating or on these things. That amount is it enough for them to set up a business? Let me tell so you. why aren't they exploring that? So, okay, so, 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 so. Now that is where the question of ease of doing business comes in. That okay, when you talk about doing business in Nigeria, it's one thing to have the fund. It's another thing Thank to you. look at you know some of the things like infrastructure, electricity, which yes. is very important. Yes. And at the end of the day, when you look at industries in Nigeria, a lot of them are now, you know, getting their power by themselves. And that's even more expensive because at the end of the day, you spend money on diesel. Even if you want to go for solar, whatever option you choose, whether it's renewable energy or diesel and all that, at the end of the day, you get to spend a lot more, which you then pass to the consumers. So these are some of the issues I believe is probably stopping them. But then I, I like to say that we've heard stories, countless stories of people who have embarked on these journeys. And we have seen, you know, that the, the, the story isn't funny. Some of these persons even get to their destinations and the, what, what they go through in the hands of the customs officers or some of the immigration officers. Some of them, you will see videos of them being beaten up. Some of them, will see videos of them being, you know, Chased, uh -huh. and you, you see some of them being harassed, you know, even shootings. And we saw a video recently. Some of these things, they are not, they are not good. They are not things you want a sane human being or a normal human being, someone you want to call a friend. Those are not the things you want that person to go through. The question then becomes, what exactly is Nigeria doing to her people? Okay. That makes them prefer, you know, because I want really to believe that before they are back on those journeys, they have they count the cost and they know that there are so many likelihoods. I mean, there's the likelihood that you know this can happen to us, that can happen to us. But for them to make up their mind, uh, their minds, and say, you know, irrespective of whatever will happen to oh, us, I would rather take that journey. That means the Nigerian government needs to. You know, I mean, there is a lot we need to do about that. Okay, so I'll start from the funding. I would like to tell you or to inform you now that most of them borrow this money. They take loan and travel because they are sure once I get to UK, I've heard stories, once I get there, I'll start working. And it's the truth. Once they get there, they start working, they pay this loan back in just a few months. How many people are able to do that? Okay. Okay. Many travel travel for, for, for those who follow the right path. Exactly. So, for, so if you're not bringing it back home, okay, that if you have this phone, why not invest it into business? You mentioned it yourself that all this infrastructure issue deficit, yes, will affect them. At the end of the day, the business will close down. Now, what's even, the, what's even the probability that this business will even um, thrive. thrive? Okay, so I would like to also say that, okay, when they get to UK, I said it earlier, they always um, get, it's sure they will get a job. Even if it's many a job, even if it's cleaning clean job, they know it's sure. Over there, there's um, dignity in labor. In Nigeria, you can't just say, I want to go and um, um, do cleaning business, and at the end of the day, I'll be able to take care of my children. It's sure for them. And that's why you see them, they, they will take everything. They, they are ready to risk everything just to travel over there. But I want to go back to Abiketa Abik Abiketa's post. She said they, are, uh, they were unable to evacuate all of them because most of them even have passports to other countries. So it's as bad as that. They know, okay, my, my journey will be easier if I have Ghana passports. My journey will be easier if I have uh, maybe uh, Malawi passports because most of this country, give, uh, they allow immigrants from other countries to, to uh, they give them visa on arrival. Which Nigerians are, are not entitled, entitled to in other country? I don't know if you're aware of that. Go ahead. So N Nigerians are not entitled to visa on arrival in some in countries. some countries. So that's why you see them; they, they, they will take that risk of traveling to other African countries, get their international passports. We already know it's not legit. They get it illegally and they travel to this country and see a lot of illegality. A lot, I mean, a at lot, the end of the lot, day, lot, lot, you want to question that person, you know? How do you blame them? Them? If our system is okay. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. Try, you're trying to fight a system, and you're fighting it, fighting it with illegality. That doesn't work. So at the end of the day, you're not different from the government. You blame course, it. You're not different course, from the system course. you're trying to run away from. If you want to look at, I mean. A lot of persons want to relocate. An average person in Nigeria wants to relocate, except people who make probably um, maybe from 1.5 million naira um, monthly. For people like that, they might want to stay back. Oh, most of them are okay. You know, yesterday, a um, bank manager leaving his, his uh, job in Nigeria and becoming a cleaner or a uh, childcare. 
abroad. Fact, why, why would you want to do that? They will that? leave because of insecurity. Uh, that, that's the point. Insecurity. <laughs> yeah. What, what will bring insecurity? They will leave because of this infrastructural deficit. They will leave because of really? police brutality. Do you know what? When you talk about insecurity, I don't know. I, this is just me thinking. For someone who is earning up to that amount, that means to a very large extent, you can afford security. I mean, private security. Mm, I, 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 if, if you ask me, you, so I just what about that, police brutality? Can you can you undo that? If you have too? private security, I mean, to, to some extent, you should be covered. Okay, well, all of us are just living under God's grace. Whether you're in Nigeria or you're in UK, it happens everywhere. It's just that there is limit to most of these things. You, you are going to say something. Uh, yeah, I was just um, saying that the the sector where you work or how much you earn isn't the problem. Okay. You don't just. You, you know what I said because I've had conversations with people. Uh, my w w my consultant. I mean, we were having a conversation one day, and I was asking him, Ah, doctor, when are you going? He said, Hmm. If I like, where does he want to start from? I mean, when he goes to UK, where will he start from? Start from. He's already a consultant. He's doing very well. He's got years of experience, and um, he's. I mean, he's earning well. So he's like perpetual. If I leave, where will I start from? I think, the fact I that think, so there are people who are earning I think, well. I think, I think his concern is if he goes there, you know, you just have to start afresh, building your. Your, your your clientele, your 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 customers, you know, and all. Building clientele, but it just feels like I mean, with, with the level of no, the, even the thing is even with the trend, people are traveling every day. Some persons will still not go. Some persons believe I can only travel abroad for vacation and I'll come back. Yeah, this is sure, my country. I understand. I will build it together. They are nation builders.